Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, I would like to talk about friction. Friction. This is just one of the forces which we are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. <coughs> so, um, the whole theory is really very, very simple. Um, it's probably the problems related to this uh, are much more important um, and that's why I would like to basically introduce the concept of uh, the friction in this lecture and then have a couple of other lectures dedicated only to problems because that's probably the most interesting and, and educational and developing. Um, okay, so this lecture is part of the Physics 14's course introduced on unisor.com. Um, now the website unisor.com contains a course of uh, mathematics, math 14s. Uh, also, there is a US law 14s as well. Um, the site is free, uh, there are no advertisements, so you're encouraged actually to watch this lecture um, from the website because it contains um, lots of very important detailed notes for each lecture and exams for those who would like to uh, get involved in uh, a little bit more. Um, interesting um, way of studying. Um, plus, you have um, the functionality, educational functionality of this website. Um, if you would like, for instance, to participate in a flipped classroom or um, study under supervision of a teacher or, or a parent, there is basically the functionality of the website which allows you to do this. Okay, back to friction. Well, you know that if you would like to move a furniture, it's, it's hard, right? Why? Well, because there is a friction. So friction is not really something which you are kind of looking forward to when you're moving the furniture, right? Now, in addition, um, if you have certain machinery, um, after a certain amount of time, the parts of this machinery are wearing out. Why? Well, because of the friction, again. So friction is not our friend in this particular case. Um, if you are in a, let's say, space shuttle which returns to Earth and it goes through, uh, it enters the atmosphere, at that time friction between the body of the spacecraft and, and the air of the atmosphere, um, the friction is so big that actually your spaceship is uh, uh, heating up tremendously. So that's just, you know, one of the very important factors why, why we don't like friction. Well, at the same time, I couldn't really stand on this floor if there is no friction. Friction is actually keeps me in place. Um, friction is something which allows me to hold the glass of water in my hands, because if there is no friction, it will just slip, slip down. Um, friction is keeping the furniture in place, for instance, that's uh, another furniture-related example. So, in these cases, friction is, uh, is good. We couldn't live without friction. The clothes probably would slip off our uh, bodies if, if there is no friction. So, um, now enough uh, theory of uh, kind of a practical implementations and practical usage of, of, of theory, let's go to the uh, more physical aspect of it, more theoretical aspect of, um, of the friction. So, first of all, why does it exist, the friction? Well, the more or less traditional explanation is that if you have two surfaces, one and another, and they are really touching each other, well, they're not really smooth as I'm just putting in the picture, they have certain bumps here and there, and this one has certain bumps here and there, and when these bumps are catching each other, that prevents the movement. So if you would like to move this object relative to this, let's say this is a floor, and this is a sofa, well, these bumps are basically catching each other, they are in this position, and to move it, you have to really like a little bit maybe even lift and uh, maybe some bumps will be crashed 
during this movement. I mean, it, it, it's kind of a difficult procedure. So this is the reason why um, friction exists. Okay, now, now let's go back to a little bit more theoretical aspect of it and think about what factors contribute to this friction. And right now, let's consider so-called static friction, which means this object is um, touching this object and I would like to move one um, from another, relative to another. So in the beginning, they are at rest. And now I would like to move. Now, if they are at rest, uh, uh, these bumps are already caught each other, right? So to move it, I have to um, have some kind of a force to either jump over the bumps or maybe crash certain bumps, etc. So which factors contribute to this force? I need to start movement, start the motion forward. Well, the most important factors are obviously the force. This thing pushes this way and this thing pushes back the reaction force of action and reaction because this actually contributes to to this catching between the bumps, right? And also what's very important is the material these surfaces are made of. There are smoother materials and there are more rough materials. And obviously in case of material of a rough structure, this catching is substantial and it's more difficult to move. Now, let's consider the most typical situation that we are on a horizontal plane. Let's say this is the floor and the floor is completely horizontal. So what kind of a, uh, forces exist here. Well, obviously the pressure is a result of the gravitation, right? So the weight of this guy is this guy onto the floor uh, and obviously the reaction uh, backwards are these two most important contributors to this pressure between these two objects. Okay, now it has been experimentally um, established that for given two uh, surfaces, for any pair of given surfaces, weight is actually the most important factor and the force needed to start movement to push from the position of rest forward depends on only on this particular um, uh, pressure or weight in this particular case uh, and is proportional to this. So the force which is needed to start the motion is proportional to the weight in this particular case. Now in a more general case um, we, shouldn't uh, we shouldn't really put the weight, we should really put some kind of a force which acts perpendicularly to this surface, right? So I will use the letter N, which stands for a normal. So the normal force against this surface. Now, why is it important? Well, because our floor can be tilted. In this particular case, force goes this way, but it's not really the force, the full weight uh, of this object, which contributes to the pressure between these two items. I have to really make such a representation of my weight going normally, perpendicularly to the surface and tangentially to the surface and only this component is actually contributing to this formula. Only this component would be N. Now obviously there is a reaction force now, and this is the force needed for basically pushing it down. Okay, so now let's just consider this particular problem in the following contents. I have this particular structure, and let's say this angle is phi. What I'm interested is, 
how uh, big the um, angle phi should be um, that the object still doesn't really move that its own weight is insufficient to move it or if you wish what is exactly the angle phi when the movement starts all right so maximum from all those angles when object still stands still or minimum from all those angles when the option slide uh, when the object slides down just on its own weight how can i solve this particular problem well again since my force of the um, uh, static friction depends on certain coefficient mu which is basically depends on the surfaces and let's consider I know this because I have to know what these objects are made of let's say it's wood or metal or something like this they all have different coefficients of uh, uh, friction now so considering I know mu uh, let's just think about what is exactly the force of static friction according to this formula well, if this angle is phi, this angle is obviously phi as well, right? Because it's two perpendicular to two perpendiculars. Uh, I mean, angle between two perpendiculars to the sides of the angle. And obviously, if this is W, this is the weight, then this is equal to W times cosine of phi. Which means my force of static friction, which prevents... Uh, movement is equal to uh, mu times w times cosine phi okay so this force is always against the motion right it prevents the motion now what basically this is this is the maximum actually force of the friction because uh, let's consider I I uh, pull a little bit let's consider a horizontal place it's even easier and let's consider that I'm pulling something with certain force but it's very very weak force my object would not move which means that my resistance which is static friction is equal to my force which I am applying to pull the uh, the object to the left right now as I'm increasing my force which I'm pulling the object with. Object still is in, in, the, in the position of rest, in the state of rest, which means my um, uh, static friction is increasing as well, right? Because the object stands still, it doesn't move, which means all function, uh, fr uh, friction and, and, and the force of pulling are supposed to be the same, right? And only if I'm overcoming this particular um, uh, force of static friction then the object starts moving and that's exactly what this is, is this is exactly what coefficient mu is related to so it establishes the maximum um, force of static friction or if you wish minimum of the force of pulling to start moving the object it's either or it's still the same thing so maximum of friction, it cannot go beyond this, or minimum of the pulling force to start the motion from the, from the state of rest. Same thing here, except here is the uh, weight is just vertical, and here um, the normal uh, it does not correspond to the weight. So this is my normal, this is my force of friction, and okay so the force of friction always against the movement now my weight this component of the weight let's call it weight forward now the weight forward is obviously weight times sine of phi right this is phi this is phi and this is weight times sine of phi so this force goes this way and my force of uh, static friction this one goes this way now 
my question is when exactly the object starts moving well obviously when these function th when these forces are exactly the same um, which means that the maximum static force is equal to my component of the weight which goes tangential to the to the uh, inclined uh, at that moment th this this is this um, pivotal moment before that moment as I'm increasing this for instance if I'm increasing the angle I'm obviously in, in increasing this component so before that moment object stands still it does not slide down but as soon as I have reached the uh, angle when this force is equal to the maximum possible friction static friction then this is exactly the beginning of the motion so these are supposed to be equal to each other and obviously um, uh, weight cancels out so I have sine phi is equal to mu cosine phi or divided by cosine I will have tangent phi equals mu not beta mu and phi is equal to arc tangent mu so this is the answer this is the angle starting from which if I increase the angle my object starts sliding down because my force will no longer be able to uh, to hold the object this will become uh, greater than maximum so this force force of resistance has certain maximum and the maximum is this one so while my weight is such that its tangential component less than that maximum then the friction will be sufficient to hold the, uh, the object at the same place as soon as I have exceeded that maximum uh, immediately I start moving so what's important here is that the static friction force is only as big as I'm trying to pull the object and start moving but not greater than certain maximum value which is determined by um, the coefficient of uh, static friction and the normal pressure between the surfaces okay all right so this is all about static friction static friction is when we are trying to start moving the object now I'm sure everybody notice that if you are moving a sofa if you ever move a sofa it's more difficult to start moving than to continue moving so once it's already moving it's kind of easier to move it further now why is that well there is a concept of as I was saying static friction and there is a concept of kinetic friction so kinetic fri friction is a friction between moving parts and it's not the same obviously as um, uh, friction between the parts which are not moving against each other now why they are different well let's go back to this theory of the friction related to these bumps you see if uh, the objects are not moving against each other the pressure which is applied from this to this or from this to that is sufficient to to penetrate <clears throat> so bumps of the uh, top part penetrate in between the bumps of the bottom part as soon as I start moving they don't really have time to to go deeper they are kind of sliding on the surface they are definitely touching something all these bumps are touching but this is much more difficult situation to overcome than this so if they are just slightly um, touching each other and that's exactly the case when we start moving uh, then it's kind of easier to uh, to move further because these bumps are not deeply penetrating into each other now does it depend on speed well yes uh, but most likely it's not that much of a dependency and in the problem which we will be solving 
in most of the cases we will not really have this dependency. I mean, intuitively you, you would think that with the higher speed the tension, this uh, friction between the, these uh, two parts should be smaller because the penetration would be even less deep, right? More shallow. But at the same time, if you think about this, these bumps are so tiny that uh, even a normal uh, and, and relatively slow speed would still uh, be sufficient for them to basically slide only on the tops of each other without any kind of a deep penetration. Um, but obviously it's an approximation and this particular law, it's not like a really a hundred percent mathematically correct law. It's kind of an approximation and it's sufficient in our experience to have this approximation as long as we know the coefficient of um, uh, static friction or in, in, in the case of kinetic friction, the coefficient of kinetic friction. So these are two different things. I mean, the um, state of rest is significantly different from state of movement as far as the friction is, con is concerned. But one state of movement with one speed from another state of movement with another speed, they do not really differ that much and we usually ignore these differences. So we will have to deal with two different kinds of coefficients of friction. The static coefficient to start moving the object, which by the way we will rarely use in our, prob in our problems, and kinetic uh, friction. That's the friction of the same type actually. It's also the force of friction will depend on some coefficient of kinetic uh, friction and the normal pressure. So the formula is exactly the same but coefficient between two different uh, kinds of surfaces like between metal and metal or whatever else is probably different in case of movement than in case of um, starting motion from the position of rest. In any case, my point is that the old theory which I was just talking about is exactly the same and um, if you already have a problem where the motion is kind of already occurring then you obviously have to talk about the kinetic motion. If you have a problem, which by the way I think is a rare problem, when you have to start moving then basically the problem is exactly the same. The only difference is the quantity of this, this coefficient has a different number basically. So it's one number of certain you know units per whatever in, in one case and a certain unit in, in another case. Um, and by the way, what's interesting about these things, this is the force, which is means which means it's a vector, right? Now, what's the direction of this force? Well, direction of this force is um, against the movement. Now, if there is some kind of a trajectory where where our object is moving, then this force, since it's directed always, for instance, this is my movement. Now, my force of um, friction always against it, which means it's always tangential to trajectory. Now, this is always perpendicular to trajectory. So, this is not a vector equality. This is equality between the magnitudes of these vectors. So the correct would be either just don't use this bar on top, so just this, assuming that we are dealing with magnitudes of these vectors. Directions we do know. This is tangential to trajectory, this is perpendicular to trajectory. Because obviously the tension depends on how you press the uh, surface where you are moving, right? And um, as far as uh, direction, so these are perpendicular to each other. And this is purely numerical, it's not vector uh, equality, it's purely numerical equality because this particular two things are in perpendicular directions, right? Okay, that's basically it. Now I promised to uh, solve a few problems that would be the subject of
one or two next lectures about frictions. Um, and other than that, um, that's it. I do suggest you to read notes to this lecture. Um, they are quite substantial, quite details. You can read it like a textbook, basically. Um, and it, it's more or less whatever I was just talking about, but it's still nice to read it again. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much and good luck.